Military commander, politician, sports administrator, criminal, murderer, and head of the Serb paramilitary force during the Yugoslav wars, Jelko Ratnatovic, better known as Arkan, did almost everything in his life. Arguably the most dangerous man in the Balkans, who was on Interpol's most wanted list for robberies, murders, and prison escapes in the 1970s and 80s, had convictions and warrants in Sweden, Holland, West Germany, Belgium, Austria, Italy, and Switzerland. Watch the video till the end as we tell you about the life of Jelko Ratsnatovic, also known as Arkan. Early Life Jelko Ratsnatovic was born in Brzezitsi, a tiny border village in Lower Styria, Yugoslavia, on April 17, 1952. Ratsnatovic's father, Veljko, was a decorated officer in the SFR Yugoslav Air Force. He served in World War II and rose through the ranks as a result of his crucial part in battle victories. Jelko spent part of his childhood in Zagreb before his father's business led the family to move to Belgrade, Serbia. Jelko grew up in a rigid militaristic and patriarchal household with his father abusing him physically on a regular basis. Even then, Rasnatovic wanted to follow in his father's footsteps and become a pilot. But his childhood was tough as his parents split up due to their different priorities and routines. The Crime Life Rasnatovic was arrested for the first time in 1966 for stealing women's purses at a young age of 14. Upon hearing the news, his father sent him to the beach resort of Kotor to join the Yugoslav Navy after a year in juvenile detention camp, but young Ratsnatovich had other ideas altogether. At 15 years of age, Ratsnatovich escaped from the training and moved to Paris on his own. But his taste of crime led him to another arrest. French police deported him home in 1969, where he was sentenced to three years in a prison camp in Vallejo. It was during this time that he established his own prison gang. Imprisonment and Escapes After serving his sentence, Rasnatovich moved to Western Europe in 1972. He maintained his contacts with a number of well-known Yugoslav gangsters while he was abroad. During his stay in Western Europe, Rasnatovich obtained a number of forged passports, one of which bore the name Arkan. He was captured in Belgium on December 28, 1973 while using that passport after committing a bank theft and sentenced to 10 years in prison. Rasnatovich escaped the Belgian prison six years into his sentence on July 4, 1979. However, he was again captured in the Netherlands on October 24, 1979. During his two months of freedom, he carried out two more armed robberies in Sweden and three more in the Netherlands. He was then given a seven-year sentence in an Amsterdam prison, but Arkan made yet another escape on May 8, 1981 after someone handed him a gun. This escape was followed by more robberies, but this time in West Germany, where he was captured in Frankfurt on the 5th of June 1981 after a jewelry store robbery. During the shootout with police, Arkan was mildly injured, which led to his confinement in the jail hospital ward. Rasnatovic benefited from minimum security in the hospital ward and was able to flee only four days later on June 9th, allegedly by jumping from the window and beating up the first passerby and snatching his clothes before leaving. To his bad luck, he was again captured during a regular traffic check on the 15th of February 1983 in Basel, Switzerland. Amazingly enough, he succeeded to escape from Thorberg prison again just a few months later on April 27, 1983. The Return Then Arkan decided to return to Belgrade and resumed his criminal career by overseeing a number of unlawful activities. He started off by robbing a bank in Zagreb in November 1983, six months after his return with the robbers also placing a rose on the counter, which was Arkan's signature from his thefts in Western Europe. Looking at the evidence, two police officers dressed in civilian clothes arrived at his mother's flat in Belgrade after the robbery, and as Ratsnatovic was not at home, the police officers introduced themselves to his mother as friends of her son, who were attempting to repay a cash debt owed to him and asked if they could wait for him to return. Rasnatovich's mother secretly called him and informed him of the situation. To the officer's surprise, Rasnatovich arrived with a handgun and shot and wounded both police officers. As a result, he was arrested right afterwards and imprisoned, only to be released 48 hours later. This incident demonstrated to all spectators, particularly his criminal rivals, that he was protected by the Yugoslav political leadership at the highest levels. Arkan was at the peak of his powers. He was often spotted cruising about Belgrade in a pink Cadillac and gambling on roulette in casinos all across the country. Following a game of poker in a private apartment in Belgrade, an elevator incident with a building occupant happened who turned out to be a powerful person himself. Arkan was arrested as a result, and the case was brought to trial. The trial had an interesting discussion between him and the judge, as during the pre-session identification, 
Arkan indicated that he worked for the Secretariat of Internal Affairs. When the prosecution pressed him on this, Arkan presented a paper outlining a UDBA mortgage loan for one of his homes. After all the arguments, Arkan was sentenced to six months in the Belgrade Central Prison. The infamous Dynamo Red Star Riot. Arkan was also the head of the hooligan supporters of the football club Red Star Belgrade, and after serving his six-month sentence, was present at the away game against Croatian side Dynamo Zagreb. This game was taking place just days after the 1990 Croatian multi-party election and resulted in the historic Dynamo Red Star Riot. Arkan and Delije, which was a group of 1,500 people, got involved in a massive brawl with football hooligans from the home club. In late October 1990, Arkan had to travel to Knin, Croatia, in order to meet with members of the Republic of Serbian Krajina, which was a Serb breakaway area that wanted to stay in FR Yugoslavia rather than join the Croatian government. During his return, Arkan was apprehended by Croatian police on the Croatian-Bosnian border on November 29th. Arkan's group was deported to Sisak and charged with plotting to destabilize the newly constituted Croatian state. Arkan received a sentence of 20 months in prison and was freed from Zagreb's remittance prison on June 14, 1991, after the Croatian and Serbian governments agreed upon DM 1 million as a fine in exchange for his release. Arkan's Tigers After his return, Arkan formed the formidable SDG, which was also known as Arkan's Tigers. The group was established in a former military facility in Urdut as a paramilitary unit assisting Serb armies with a corps of 200 men and a total force of 500 to 1,000 men. Arkan's army was small in numbers but was feared everywhere. Under Arkan's command, the SDG massacred hundreds of civilians in eastern Croatia and Bosnia and Herzegovina. The organization was armed and supplied privately with the help of Serbian police reserves and captured enemy munitions. The SDG was very active in the Vukovar region when the Croatian War of Independence broke out in 1991. After the Bosnian War broke out in April 1992, the unit roamed between the Croatian and Bosnian fronts, killing and deporting predominantly Bosniak civilians in many incidents of racial cleansing. Arkan personally led the majority of these operations, rewarding his most effective commanders and soldiers with ranks, medals, and looted riches. As a result of his actions, Arkan became a popular figure among both Serbs and his opponents. He was a patriot and folk hero for certain Serbs, but a target of hatred and fear for Croats and Bosniaks. Then came the Dayton Accord, which was finalized in the post-war period, and as a result, Arkan returned to his sports and private business interests in 1996, with SDG also being formally abolished. Sports and Arkan Arkan loved soccer, and as a result took over the FK Obilic in 1996. The club was playing in the second tier of Yugoslav leagues, but was quickly transformed into a top-tier club, winning the 1997-98 Yugoslav League Championship. Arkan threatened players on opposing teams that if they scored against Obilic, they would be killed. Moreover, thousands of SDG veterans gathered on his team's home field, yelling threats and, on occasion, pointing firearms at other players during matches. Opposition players were even captured and confined in rooms before games. Indicted and Killed On September 30, 1997, the International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia indicted Arkan for genocide and massacre against the Bosnian Muslim people, along with crimes against humanity and grave violations of the Geneva Conventions. The warrant was not made public until March 31, 1999, a week after NATO began bombing Yugoslavia as part of the Kosovo War intervention. In conversations with foreign reporters during the NATO bombing, Arkan denied the war criminal claims leveled against him. Arkan accused NATO of bombing civilians and producing refugees of all nationalities, and that he would only send in his forces if NATO launched a land assault. After the bombing of the Chinese consulate in Belgrade, which killed three journalists and prompted a diplomatic spat between the United States and China, the British Observer and Danish newspapers claimed the building was targeted because Arkan was using the office of the Chinese military attaché to communicate and transmit messages to his paramilitary group in Kosovo. After decades of petty crime, violence, and state-sponsored murders, Jelko Rasnatovic was ultimately killed on January 15, 2000, in the lobby of the Continental Hotel in New Belgrade. He was murdered by Dobrozev Gavrik, a 23-year-old junior police mobile unit member with mafia affiliations who was on sick leave at the time. As Arkan was speaking with two buddies, the young police officer came up from behind and after waiting for a few moments, fired a series of bullets from his CZ-99 handgun. Arkan was wounded in the left eye and immediately went into a coma. 
His bodyguard, Zvonko Matejovic, tried to take him to the hospital in a car, but Arkan died on the way. A memorial service was held in Arkan's honor on January 19, 2000. Angelko Rasnatovich was laid to rest with military honors and burial rites at the Belgrade New Cemetery on January 20, 2000. Well, that's it for today's video. We hope you enjoyed the content of the video, and if you did, show some love and hit that like button. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you never miss out on any of the amazing videos we have in store for you.